Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Tanya Sanchez claims her family's pet hamster was fatally injured after it escaped when her babysitter took it out of its cage. All right. Kelly Wu says the lethal trauma happened when Ms. Sanchez dropped the animal after it was found. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Please be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Sean. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Sanchez versus Wu. Mrs. Sanchez, you are suing Ms. Wu for $325 for veterinarian bills and harm to your pet. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Wu, you say the plaintiff is responsible. Is that correct? Yes, Ms. I'll start with you, Mrs. Sanchez. What happened? Your Honor, I'm here today to sue Mrs. Kelly over here. She was my daughter's sitter. Um, I have a three-year-old. My husband and I went on a date night and, you know. Three-year-old boy or girl? Girl, her okay. name is Stella. Um, but we went out that night and I left Miss Kelly a list. Not too long, left her some emergency contact information um, just to kind of keep her going, know what to expect, like you would Normal any other Normal things that she would leave for a sitter. Most definitely. Okay. Um, with that being said, she deviated from that list. So you planned a date night with your husband. Mm -hmm. Ms. Wu is your babysitter. Yes. Is she a normal babysitter or a new babysitter? Your Honor, actually, she was referred to me by my neighbor. Okay, so you yeah. got a referral, but yes. she was new. Yes. It was I mean, her first time sitting for you. Yes, Your Honor. You all were deciding to go to where? Dinner or what? My husband actually surprised us or surprised me with uh, movie tickets and then a new, take me out to a new restaurant by the beach. Well, that's nice. Yeah. I love a restaurant by the beach, <laughs> don't you? Right. Love it. So. Can you give the court um, some idea of what kind of things are on your list? So typically just, you know, feed her a healthy dinner. You know, I don't like feeding my kid junk food. Um, clean up, do the dishes, have my daughter. I like to engage her and teach her, you know, just right from wrong, how to clean up after herself. So to clean up after the evening, um, play a few board games. I don't really like her watching too much television. Uh, with that being said, I, half of the list got done. And like I said, she had deviated from it and took out a hamster that was not even on the list. What? Okay, so that's why you're here. She yes. took the hamster, which is your daughter's pet, mm -hmm. out of the... It was a cage, so like I have the, a cage, cage, a little setup for a snowflake is the hamster. Snowflake, yeah. okay. And so she took snowflake out and what happened? Um, from what we were told, when she, so she had texted me, my husband and I were having dinner, I didn't get the text, but when she called, she called frantically. You hear my daughter still in the background, just hysterical. She's sobbing. I thought she had an emergency, like I thought she had fallen or something, and that wasn't the case. Um, Kelly had told me that she had built a maze, taken out Snowflake, built a maze, forgot about Snowflake while giving her a bath. If I could present you with this evidence here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wu, when you got the call about babysitting for Mrs. Sanchez and her husband, oh, look at Snowflake. Yeah. Snowflake got a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> that is precious. So when you got the call about babysitting for the Sanchez family, you are a babysitter, you babysit a lot. Yes, um, I am a college student at uh, M uh, U of M, and um, I, I've babysat for her. The U of M? Which U of M is this? Michigan. Well, go blue! Yeah, uh -oh. go blue. Go blue, that's my college. Yeah. So you are a supremely intelligent being, <laughs> and you know, I'm only teasing. So you are a student at the University of Michigan. You babysit as a way to make extra money. Yes. Um, and so this wasn't your first babysitting job. Yeah, I have uh, babysat for the early family. Okay. Um, for three years now already, and uh, and so when you got the call, you said you'd go babysit for them. Yeah. Was there anything on the list of details that Mrs. Sanchez left, left that you didn't understand or was outside the bounds of your normal babysitting duties? No. All right, and so she says that during the course of your babysitting, you decided to take the pet hamster out of the cage and play a game with the hamster. Um, so...
after Stella and I had dinner, uh, we did dishes together and we took out the trash together, um, which both were on the list. And um, Stella showed me uh, Snowflake, and I saw how cute and adorable she is. So I asked if we could take her out and put her in, like, um, if we could take her out of her cage. You asked the three-year-old, could we take Snowflake out? Yes. Coming up. And that's when you get the call, Mrs. Sanchez, yes. at dinner. Yes, sir. And that's the worst. I mean, when you finally get out as a parent and just have a minute to yourself, it is nothing like getting that call, and then you're hearing shrills and screams on the other end because nobody can find Snowflake. And later. And then it was the fifth game after lunch, and he was flirting with this lady on, on the other team. After that, he just kept messing up. It, it was like on purpose. We were there to win. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Tanya Sanchez, who brought Kelly Wu to court over a fatally wounded hamster. All right, and what happened? Um, uh, we built her a uh, maze, and which, I mean, I made sure all the four walls were sealed completely, and the walls were about yay high, which is about two, three times the height of a hamster. So I have no idea how she could have gotten out. Actually, Your Honor, um, I have a video of the maze, of the hamster. I'd like to see it. Yes. Uh, you submitted it to the court? Yes. All right. Yes. Can someone please play the uh, video of Snowflake's maze? Okay. Yes. As you can see, the walls are built up really high, and there's uh, no way uh, she could have gotten out. And um, all four corners are sealed. And if you could just see how small um, Snowflake is, I, don't, I really don't know how she could have gotten out of that maze. So this was very creative. However, what happened to Snowflake if you say all four corners were sealed? and the hamster couldn't get out, what happened? Um, I'm not really certain. We went to take a bath, and then when we came back, uh, during the bath, uh, Stella was asking about Snowflake, so we went back to go see her, and she wasn't in the maze anymore. Um, we looked around, uh, Stella was uh, kind of freaking out a little bit. She was screaming and crying, and we looked under all the furniture. And you couldn't find Snowflake anywhere? No. And uh, that's when you get the call, Mrs. Sanchez, yes. at dinner. Yes, sir. And right. that's the worst. I mean, when you finally get out as a parent and just have a minute to yourself, it is nothing like getting that call, and then you're hearing shrills and screams on the other end because nobody can find Snowflake. Yes. All right, so you come home. Where's Snowflake? Do you ever find Snowflake? So it took us, we rushed home, we got back to my condo, our condo, my husband and I, and, you know, we're looking, the three of us. It took us about an hour, maybe a little bit longer than an hour to look for her. We're running and where was stuff. she? Kelly ended up finding her underneath a pile of toys. Um, she picked her up. Somewhere else in the room, not inside not, the maze. Not in the maze, Your Honor, no. And what condition was she in? Was she oh, okay? She was uh, completely fine, and uh, Snowflake yeah. was alive and moving and well when I found her. But Miss um, Sanchez, uh, she grabbed Snowflake from me, and on her way to put her back to her cage, she dropped Snowflake. You dropped it? She says you dropped it. Did you drop? In the franticness, yes, I did, but it's, I was freaked out because it wasn't moving. Our little snowflake wasn't moving. She was still, she was not moving. Ms. Wu says she was alive and well. Well, she was still, Your Honor. She was not moving. And she so was on alive the way, and I well. Had... Um, she was under uh, stuffed bear that we couldn't have crushed her at all. And um... So it was just a stuffed bear? Yes. All right, I've heard enough. This is the problem here. Um, the price that you're suing for is 300 $25. How much did you pay Ms. Boo to babysit her? You didn't pay her at all after no, that. No, I did. I excused her when we found our little snowflake, and I excused her, but I paid her for her services that night. Okay, and how much did you Your pay her? $120. Your uh Honor, I believe um, I shouldn't have to pay the $325 because uh, she's asked, I offered to pay for another hamster, but she refused, and um, she's asking me now to pay not only for the hamster, but for the cage and for uh, like food and for other hamster supplies that um, none of which were damaged within this incident. Yes, Your yeah, Honor. The, the, look, at the end of the day, this was an an, a really unfortunate accident, but it was avoidable. And both of you have a part to play in it. It's the determination of this court that the judgment will be for the plaintiff. You already paid Ms. 
um, woo for her services $120. Mm -hmm. You're only suing her for $325, which is the cost of the bills, which is what you submitted to the court, it's right? All, yeah, you have and it's a cost of what? To replace and buy another hamster? It's the hamster, the cage, the food, the toys. Well, what's wrong water? with the cage? Well, Your Honor, my daughter is traumatized. I, you know, my husband. What does that have to do with her trauma? Doesn't have anything to do with the cage. You can't replace the hamster, Your Honor. But you're not suing for trauma. You're not suing for emotional distress. You're suing for. The, the hamster being injured, right? You're, yes, Your Honor. I just, I, how am I to replace How that? much does I it invested. cost to get another hamster? That's what I want to know. Uh, yeah. it's, there's on the bill, I think it's 25 Your Honor. All right, so it's $25 to get another hamster. Yes. And then you can get another hamster. Yes. Did you pay any veterinarian bills yes. related to taking Snowflake yes. to the doctor? Yes, I did. How much were those? Um, I believe it's on their hundred something. Here we are, $168.45. So at the end of the day, $168.45 is the cost of everything you paid for with the hamster, plus the $25 it would take to get another hamster. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so the total of that is... $193.45 would then allow you to get another hamster and be refunded for the vet bills. In light of all of this, I think both of you all had a part to play in Snowflake's unfortunate demise. And for that reason, I think you both need to split the fees that were incurred trying to save Snowflake and replacing the hamster for Stella. I do believe you performed your job, though, in terms of babysitting, Ms. Wu. I will say that. But I think you are responsible for the things you did wrong that evening, which was leaving the pet unattended. For that reason, it's this court's determination that the plaintiff is owed $96.72 judgment for the plaintiff. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $96.72. Kelly, I think you're a sweet kid, and I hope you learn from this. You traumatized my daughter, and I can't get that back. No, no price can match that. Well, what did you think was going to happen when you got her a hamster? That the hamster would live forever? Coming up. I wasn't feeling well. We did win the first four matches, but when it came to the final round, I have custody of my son, by the way. He's three years old, and he was feeling sick, so his babysitter called me, and that was on my mind. So though. you were sick or he was sick? You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Tabitha Sunder claims her pickleball partner intentionally tanked the championship game so the other team would win. Joseph Bambry says he played his best, but their competitors were better. This is the case of Sunder versus Bambry. Ms. Sunder, you are suing Mr. Bambry for $2,450 because you say he lost a match on purpose. Yes, you're right. All right. The defendant, Mr. Bambry, you say the other team just played better. Yes, Your Honor, that's All correct. All right, take me back. What kind of match was this? This was a championship. I had met Joe like four years ago. We were matched up. It was a fitness club. They had a championship at that time going on. A championship in what sport? Pick a pickleball. Oh, pickleball. That's mm -hmm. all the rave. Everybody's mm -hmm. talking about that and playing pickleball. I've never played, so. All right, so. <sighs> we won the first four games that morning, and then it was the fifth game after lunch, and he was flirting with this lady on the other team. Well, after that, he just kept messing up. It, it was like on purpose. We were there to win. So the $2,450 you say he owes you, it, what kind of damages are those? Okay, well, I feel that's the half. The, we, we got $2,500. I felt he owed me that plus my expenses. The whole thing comes to $2,450. So you're saying you spent money to go have a chance to win $5,000. Is that the prize? Yes, and we're both good enough. We were And you incurred expenses for this trip, mm -hmm. and you say he did not play to the best of his ability. Correct. Coming up. Ms. Sunder, did he ever say to you, I am really feeling awful today? No, not a word. And we, we did well on the first four games. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Tabitha Sunder, who blames Joseph Bambury for losing a pickleball championship. 
Did you play to the best of your ability, Mr. Bambry? Your Honor, I tried, but there was a few things going on at the moment. I wasn't feeling well. We did win the first four matches, but when it came to the final round, I have custody of my son, by the way. He's three years old, and he was feeling sick, so his babysitter called me, and that was on my mind. So though. you were sick or he was sick? He was sick, and I was feeling sick as well, and I was What were you sick from? Well, because I was stressing out, I was nervous, I was playing against, the opponent was my girlfriend, and I didn't know she was going to be in the finals. So you're saying you didn't throw the game, Mr. Bambry, you're saying you just had a bad day. Yes. You I was... didn't feel well, your son didn't feel well. Yeah, he was on my mind, and I started to gain a fever. Did you tell your partner that, Ms. Sunder, did he ever say to you, I am really feeling awful today? No, not a word, and we, we did well on the first four games. Mm -hmm. We were... I and all of a sudden, on that fifth game, he just didn't feel well. She says you were flirting. I flirted afterwards. I was congratulating her on... Was he flirting before, before or after, Mr. Well, we, there was a break. We had a, there was a lunch break. And then before we began, he's carrying on with this woman. Who, carrying on how? Uh, flirting with... You know, like they knew each other. Your but Honor, it's my I, girlfriend. Well, it was his girlfriend. It's my girlfriend. But, but I didn't know that. I mean, it, it didn't we, seem right to when we're opposing teams. When you get in for pickleball, you get really very serious. And you knew when you got on the court it was your girlfriend. Yeah, of course, Your Honor. All right. She says you were flirting. He was making beginner mistakes, things I'd never seen him do before. All right, so Ms. Sunder, you have a partner that has become extremely disadvantaged by the way he feels, the way his child feels, the way Boo Boo the Fool feels, because that's who you must think that I am to believe this nonsense that you're over here testifying to, Mr. Bambry. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. I've heard enough. Um, it's the opinion of this court. Mr. Bambry, you had this woman come out here under the guise that you were going to go after it no matter what. You're going after the prize. She spent money to do that. Now, Ms. Sunder, you were never guaranteed that you were going to win the big prize money, right? But you basically got a guarantee from your partner that I'm going to show up and play to the best of my ability, mm -hmm. right? So this court does not believe that you are owed the entitled $2,450 because you did, in fact, win $1,250, which is half of $2,500. So mm -hmm. it is this court's opinion that you are owed the difference, which is $1,200. And Mr. Bambry, the next time you decide to get someone to enter a competition with you, you show up and be your very best. Judgment for the plaintiff for $1,200. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $1,200. I tried. In the beginning? Under my health conditions and the family conditions that I have back at home, I did. To my well, best you, of you my had ability. the nanny. What could you, could you do about it? We were at the situation. Okay, my son's still... being rushed to the hospital, possibly. That's not going to be on my mind. I might not trip or something. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.